Within Expressor, all work is done within a workspace. Expressor ships with an example workspace that you can open and view, or you can create your own workspaces. Once you create a workspace, you need to select the area where the files will be stored. By default, they're stored under your My Documents directory, but you can browse out to a different location. Give your workspace a distinctive name. You can have as many workspaces as your work requires, and it's very easy to switch from one workspace to another. After you have a workspace, Expressor works within the concept of a project or a library. Projects and libraries are nearly identical, the exception being that a library may be imported into another library or a project, thereby making all of its artifacts available to the other project or library. You can create a new project or library by simply clicking on a button in the toolbar. In this example, we've created both a library and a project, and you can see that their underlying subdirectory structure is very similar. In the project, we'll cross-reference the library, so that now any artifacts we create within the library will also be available to artifacts within the project. An Expressor application is made up of several artifacts. The first is the data flow, which is a graphical representation of your data integration application. The connection artifact tells Expressor where external data is located, for example, file data or database data. The schema artifact describes the structure of that external data. Type artifacts are useful for reusing useful structural types. For example, you might have a type that describes a purchase order number that you want to use frequently in various applications. By storing this as an individual type, all of your work is reusable. Data script modules are segments of reusable code that can be cross-referenced in any other segment of code. Again, it provides for reusability. And the lookup table is a useful way to provide easy and fast lookup of values within your application. As you can see, the structure under the library and the structure under the project are exactly the same, and you can create any one of these artifacts by right-clicking on the subdirectory and selecting New from the menu. Alternatively, over in the task panel, you can select the appropriate artifact and then the link to start the desired wizard. Some of the artifacts, for example, schema artifacts and connection artifacts, have multiple wizards to develop different types of artifacts. Now we'll create our first data flow. Notice that you can store the data flow in either the library or the project, so you should be careful that you pick the appropriate storage location. Once the data flow is created, the Operators panel appears. With the Operators panel, you then select the various operators and simply drag them onto the data flow and connect them in the desired order to create your data integration application. Each of the operators is pre-configured to do a particular job, so that once you drag an operator onto the data flow, your job of configuring it is very simple and done completely through a wizard. So we'll build up our first data flow by dragging the read file operator onto the canvas. Next, we'll go get a transform operator and connect it to the read file operator. And finally, we'll get the write file operator and add it to the application. Now, this is a very simple application, but it will let us show you the various artifacts in use. If you select an operator, its Properties panel appears, and it's in the Properties panel that you configure the operator. Now, several operators, such as the Transform operator, require coding, and we'll return to that in a later video. In the Messages panel, you'll also see a list of errors or warnings or simple messages that tell you what you need to do to make your data flow a valid application.